Welcome to the Pinnacles at Nambung National Park in Western Australia. To begin with, I would like to pay my respects to the traditional owners of this land which I'm filming this video, the Uid people of the Noongar Nation, and pay my respects to the elders past and present. I've been meaning to do I've been meaning to get back into doing videos for quite a while now. Uh, I actually have a particular series in mind which is going to be a combination of doing uh, tutorials and also scouting out astrophotography locations across Western Australia and maybe even beyond that as well. And I thought to myself as a very good location to begin with is that the Pinnacles in Western Australia. Uh, it's a fantastic location for astrophotography uh, being for a number of reasons. One, it's got this absolutely fantastic foreground uh, being the, the Pinnacles. There are thousands of these limestone pillars uh, scattered throughout this desert landscape. Some of them going as high as three and a half metres. Another great positive about this location is the accessibility. It's only about 200 kilometres north of Perth and is accessible through with two wheel drive and there's a fairly major highway coming close by to it. The third great thing about this location is the very low light pollution. According to the light pollution map, it's actually got a bottle one. However, I've actually measured light pollution at this location a couple of times this year. It's actually come up as bottle four, but it's still extremely dark and you can see a lot of detail in the, in the stars. Now it's said that the pinnacles are about 25 to 30,000 years old, uh, that they were ultimately revealed through erosion. It's a little bit difficult to say exactly how they originated. Uh, I think there was some commentary before that they were created by tree roots and also there's some, some thought that it might also be from seashells. Now I've been coming to the Pinnacles now for since I think about 2012. Uh, it was one of the earlier locations that I've been doing astrophotography from. Uh, I used to cart a friend of mine over here in the middle of the night and he'd sit in the car while I'd be doing star trails or photographing the Milky Way. There wasn't actually all that much in terms of astrophotography from here back then, but it's certainly grown. I'm certainly not the first person who started doing astrophotography from here. But in the earlier days of photographing from here, there was almost no one here in the middle of the night. I still remember contacting the Pinnacles Visitor Centre and asking if I can uh, access the location after hours and they said that they encouraged it because a lot of photographers came here and photographed the sunset from this location. I kind of stayed a little bit longer, like uh, many, many hours. You're not allowed to camp here overnight, by the way. And if you're fortunate enough as well, you might also see some of the wildlife. Uh, the, just driving in early on, I uh, saw a few kangaroos bounding along. I've seen some emus, I've seen echidna. Uh, so there's quite a lot that's here in terms of the actual wildlife and also there's a lot of bird life here as well. Now I wanted to get back to doing videos and it was actually been a few years for me now since I promised that I'd get this video done. So my apologies to everyone for being so late about it. Uh, I've been talking about wanting to do a video on polar alignment of the, the portable astrophotography mounts in the southern hemisphere. Now I'm a great fan of the portable tracking mounts. The problem that we have in the southern hemisphere is that we don't have a bright star such as Polaris to polar align to. We have instead got Sigma Octanus which unfortunately you can't actually see with the naked eye. So we actually have to polar align to the octans. Now my particular journey with portable astrophotography mounts started off with a barn door tracker which is basically two planks of wood uh, and I actually used my phone to polar align it because my app at the time actually pointed towards the celestial pole so I actually created a, a small camera mount which sat on the very end of the, of the barn door tracker and it basically would say okay if I angle the whole thing in the right way then it would be polar aligned and it, it more or less worked. I found that the um, I found that with the barn door tracker it's extremely large and unwieldy but it was relatively cheap. Uh, it's not very good with the wind though because it's basically being being two planks of wood it's a giant sail. I decided to improve the process a bit and I motorized it. So by motorizing it I 
I attached a motor to it and then unfortunately it caught on fire. Anyway, so after a while I decided to invest in a, in a purchase portable tracking mount. I bought the Skywatcher Star Adventurer 1 and to begin with I actually looked at it and I, I was a bit confused as to how to align it reading the manual more or less. Uh, I like to think I'm very technically oriented but this was a little bit above my head to begin with and and to be honest I actually sat on the shelf for several months and then I realized that hey all I actually need to do is point it south and then elevate it to the uh, and then elevate it to the same degrees as our latitude now this is not anything new it's just because I have no friends, so therefore I didn't actually have anyone to bounce anything off. So based on that then, all I did to a polar align it was use a magnetic compass to point it due south and then use an inclinometer to angle it up to its celestial pole. So how I tend to do it is I actually have on here a a leveling base. The leveling base just makes it easier for me to manipulate it. And then I basically loosen the leveling base, point it, point it south, tighten it, making sure that it's level. And then I use my phone and just angle it up using an inclinometer on the phone to our latitude and then that's effectively polar aligned. Now you don't actually need to have it specifically level. It, the leveling it just makes it a lot easier when you need to regain your polar alignment later on. And polar aligning it this way I find I can do it within about 30 seconds to a minute each time. Now it's important to note is that I want to do the polar alignment before I put the tracking mount on it because what happens is that the tracking mount actually has power and batteries through it so therefore it actually affects the, the compass. Now I'll probably also add that this method is, is fine for me as well given that at my location the magnetic declination is typically one degree or less so therefore pointing it due south with just the compass is actually fine to achieve polar alignment. Uh, I have not actually gone and tried polar aligning it to a location which has got a larger magnetic declination. So the magnetic declination to my understanding is, is basically the magnetic south is not the same as the celestial pole south. So you might actually have to adjust the direction left or right by the number of degrees of declination. Now there's a few issues that people have using the portable trackers. Apart from I suppose the bulk of it is that uh, an issue that people have is hey they think that they've got to go through the whole realignment sort of process but using the leveling base all I need to do is make sure it's level, point it south and because we've already got the latitude there that's already polar aligned. Now in terms of polar alignment this actually works fine for me uh, for most of, the, most of the tracking that I do. Uh, I've tracked it for things like four minutes on, on the wide lenses for things like 35 millimeters. Uh, I've sometimes also tracked it for about five minutes using a 70 to 200 mil lens at 200 mil. It tends to be a little bit less reliable when you get to that sort of uh, focal length, but generally speaking, it's been quite good to me. And if I needed to get it to be a little bit finer after that, then I would look through the scope and align it that way. Another advantage of polar aligning it this way as well is that you can do it during the daytime. Uh, because of course, as you can see, it's not actually dark at the moment. Uh, so this can be very useful for doing time lapsing, uh, especially with say the uh, Skywatcher Star Adventure 2 and also the advanced firmware for the Skywatcher Star Adventure 1. You can do astro time lapses where it basically takes the exposure and then resets back to the, uh, the beginning spot after each image. And if you're crazy enough, then you can actually do manual bulb ramping at the same time. 
Now there's plenty of other ways to pull a line it as well. I know there is a method of using your phone, like what I was saying when I was using the barn door tracker, to align it. Uh, again, it's basically having it far enough away that you can actually um, align it properly. Because there's a number of apps which will actually point to this the celestial pole. I've found I don't really like using the phone that much for, the, for that because the phone it might just be my phone. It hasn't actually been all that accurate. That's why I like using a magnetic compass for it. Okay, that's probably it for in terms of the pole alignment part of the video. I'm planning on doing more videos into the future, getting back into it. Uh, what I'm doing is uh, traveling around Western Australia at the moment and measuring the light pollution in various locations and then re-measuring it in I suppose a year or so later just to see what the light pollution changes have happened and hopefully it's not been increasing too much hopefully we're managing it so at the same time as I'm traveling around I'll also be making commentary about what the locations are like for astrophotography so if you'd like any particular topics to be covered, please let me know, either by the comments. I'm not sure exactly where the comments will be. Probably down there, depending on what sort of medium that you're watching this on. And I'll see you later.